The Washington Beltway may be worse than driving in LA. That was intense, wow. We are going to go over the Bay Bridge pretty soon. Almost over. <sighs> you can see the bridge on the other side there. Can you imagine building this twice? <laughs> Incredible. Just driving down Delaware. A lot of agriculture. It's all very flat land. I just passed a CAFO. In case you don't know what a CAFO is, a CAFO is a confined animal feeding operation. And I was told by a dairy farmer I met on my trip that the USDA stand, oh, there's another one. that the USDA stand for, for cage-free. See, the cage-free or um, free range. <laughs> it's, it's, it's ludicrous. You will not believe this. But he told me 25,000 chickens living in a CAFO can be considered cage-free or free range if they have a 10 by 10 foot square concrete pad to step out of the building and walk around on. So, do not be misled by cage-free and free range. Know your farmer. Know where your food comes from. So I did a live webcast in 2014, I think, with Sharon from Sharon's Natural Gardens in Delaware, and we became very close. I've recommended her in uh, my Jerusalem Artichoke episode, and so I've been looking forward to meeting her in person for a while. Where are you?
Talking on the phone. That's forever. right. This is Sharon. Hey, hey. Yeah, hey. What are you guys doing? That's a really good food. So we're foraging all sorts of wild things to feed them. As Wait, well. what is this stuff he's pulling? Honeysuckle. Oh, to feed the rabbits. To feed the rabbits, and we can dry all these like things and for winter food too. Nice. Wait, you have what? Baby chicks that may hatch while I'm here. Maybe three to five days from lockdown to when they hatch. And then so, we're going to see rabbits? We're going to see rabbits. This okay. one here is a show quality silver fox called Hildy. And wow. she, she came from New Jersey. And she's due to have her babies in a week or so, week or two, maybe. They have a special fur. They're, they're endangered. They're one of the um, threatened uh -huh. li uh, in the Livestock Conservancy. Oh. What their fur is like a silver fox. See how much they love the honeysuckle? Yeah. And honeysuckle is really good uh, to prevent um, getting the flu. It's better than any flu shot. And we have another female that came from Stuart from how many, Roots. How many will she have? Well, the last, the other one had eight, but they can have like up to 12, anywhere from three to 12, depending on the bunny. Yeah. Jeff is really gentle with them. He's shy. Well, he, he pets them every day. I don't. I don't know. Uh, well, hello there. Are you getting more more okay with people? Hmm? We feed them pine cones too. There's all the stuff that they can eat pine cones. Yeah, there, there's you know we don't need to be buying them pellets. Hey, I Silver. have this most beautiful picture of her and all her babies. Not her, but all her babies in my little um, beautiful Easter basket from Africa. Wow, this is April and you've got all this stuff Well, I've stuff been eating growing. out of this stuff all winter and now it's all going to seed. Yeah. So we've, you know, got all these uh, grasses drying up here. We're going to be drying nettle and herbs up here. And um, this is where I start all my seedlings. And there's lots of real rare stuff in here. Here is stinging nettle. So you're touching it. It's not stinging well, you? I, it stings me. I don't, it doesn't bother me. But you see the little hairs on it? I see this. I see the needles. Yep. Well, that part, your skin is open. Your pores are open on the top of your hand and your whole body. But on the palm of your hand, they're closed. Right. So if you pick it with this part of your hand, it doesn't sting. There's a slug in there. Let's see it. Ah. Give that to the chicken. Oh, yeah. But, but this is, you were just saying this is a rare Sheffield? It's called the Sheffield Mum. And this was in... Chrysanthemum? Yeah. It bears in the fall these beautiful, long-lasting flowers. They are this tall, and you they got, don't die out. Is that comfrey down there? That is uh, yellow dock. Oh. It's a weed. But it's, it's a also, weed? It's a weed, but it's also medicine. Lots of weeds are medicine, aren't they? Uh, yeah. A cold, cold, wet spring this year. I've never seen it this... Is this, it, it going to be cold tonight? Yeah. That is a ripe strawberry that's yellow. Yes. It's called alpine strawberries. Right. Tastes like a pineapple. Okay. Let's try it. It tastes like a pineapple. It tastes like a pineapple. Here we go. Cheers to, I made it to Del Mar, Delaware, and Del we're Mar, celebrating Delaware. my arrival. This is a cherry lager from a local brewery in Del Mar, Delaware. Cheers. You forgot third wave. Third wave is the brewery. <laughs> well, that's good. That's better than beer. I think so. I mean, it's... it's it has more flavor than it's regular like a, beer. Well, it's like cherry. Can you taste the cherry? A little bit. Yeah. Not a lot, though. Right. No. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's... Supposed, they're using a lot of fruits in beers. I want to make nettle beer. <laughs> That'll be interesting. I've got the recipe. <laughs> Hopefully, the stinging part will go away. 
That'll be gone by morning. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> she stung me with stinging nettle. So to help your arthritis. To help these joints which are hurting from all the driving I'm doing. <laughs> this is Del these are Delawares? Yeah, he's the rooster. He he's like a really old guy. And this is five generations of of Delawares. Going for a ride. <laughs> But you can see what they do. Now you know why they're called chicken crackers. Because I know. they plow and fertilize at the same time. Uh oh. An egg? Hi, chickens. Oh, you got an egg. Yep. How many do you get a day? Uh, three or four. Because there's That's only enough for you. Right? Only, well, I, I sell a dozen or so a week. And it pays for their feed. One, two, three, four. And these chickens are about four or four, five years old, some of them. Wow. This is our, our property too, and it used to be t almost 10 acres, but the horses love coming out here. They used to have the run of the whole place, and they'd gallop around. You got vetch. Yes, we've been harvesting it for uh, the rabbits for the winter. Oh, do you dry it or let yeah, them? Yeah, we dry it as feed. It's a beautiful field. Well, it's, uh, you know. We've been trying to get it tilled, and I need a farmer in here to, to um, restore the pastures. It definitely needs regenerating. You see all the weeds out here? Mm. It definitely needs... But are I the don't... yellow flowers just weeds? Wait, wait, these little yellow flowers are poisonous? They are. Poisonous to animals? Yeah, or people. Wow. And this is wild blackberries in here. There's wild roses. There is, oh, I see the blackberries there here. There is some grass, but not much. I'm taking you out to the sacred grove. Okay. <laughs> this is where Karina wanted to build her earth ship. Oh. Right here in this corner. The sacred grove is over here? It's over here. That's where Casey's ashes are buried. Oh. Right under this special horse-like, skull-like stone that we got from an herbalist friend of ours. We visited in Missouri. It does look like a skull. It looks like a horse's skull. Yeah. And it's got these crystals all around it. It's from Arkansas, cave country. And in the sunlight, they just they just shine, the sparkle. crystals. They sparkle. Underneath the slate, in, in buried down a foot, is an urn from his mother, a pottery urn, with it, which is half full of his ashes. Oh. And his wedding ring was on is on the top of it that oh, the nice. kids gave him when he was... You know, because he, he had to cut his original one off oh. because of his masonry work. But yeah. the old grandmother horse is buried under here. Oh, and there's wow. a Celtic cross and stone over her grave. Oh, so wow. this is the head of her grave. And the horse's head skull is on at the head of the gravestone. For one second, mm -hmm. what did you call this tree? It's an autumn olive. Does it make olives or is it just a... Well, I, it, it's supposed to make olives. I don't know, recall ever seeing them, but there are these tiny little green olive things that birds like in the winter. And then the deer come up here, are welcome to graze in the pastures, but just don't come up to the garden. And he stood there all the way across from up there and, and looked at me. And I'm listening. Just, I think we have a relationship with nature that we can talk to them, just like I can talk to my horses. Yeah. They understand English. You talked to the deer and they understood you. Yeah. They stayed out of your garden. Yeah. You Well, if you give them something, and you obviously have. Well, I don't give them anything. <laughs> I just ask them. They really like that. So you just got asparagus growing any old place. Well, they are all over, and you have to know the spots oh. to remember next year. But I also Let me have... see that, that big honking thing. Mine aren't nearly that fat. Well, this is a young one, but my patch is over here. Do you, do you need some help? No, I'm now that tree right there is from Jeff Poppin. Many of the trees here, that's a dessert pear. It's a really, really happy pear. That's an apple tree from Monticello? It is. An, well, I've got two of them. Wow. Actually, I've got three. I've got two, uh, one apple, and this is a, what is it? A, uh, a Spritzenberg. A Spritzenberg. Burgundy it looks Burt. very healthy. Yeah, it's a, from um, Monticello. It's one of... Uh, Thomas Jefferson's favorite apples. This one and the other one over there. But look, mm -hmm. that's going to be baby apple. There's three. There's four of them. Oh wow! 
See, that's the one. So you've yeah, had it for six years. It takes six years to Well, start. I bought it uh, about four years ago, and it was like a one or two year old whip. That's the oldest apple tree on the place. That's about 40 years old. That's a yellow delicious. Wow. And that's a standard tree, and that's a Macintosh. Wow. What's the kitty's name? Sunny. Hey, Sunny. Hi. <laughs> Hi. There's rows of them. See, they're all through here. Oh, wow. So we're picking some for supper. Oh, wow. And this wow. is how I pick them. So I know that everything, when I pick them where they snap. Right. So where they snap, I know it's all tender. So there's so you don't, you don't have to buy cut. them in the grocery store. You do have to be careful not to walk over here. Oops, so sorry. But um, <clears throat> you buy them in the grocery store and you have to cut off. You pay them whatever per pound and you have to cut off that tough stuff. You will have asparagus smelling pea after you, uh, I warn you, just like if you eat beets, you'll have You, you said asparagus <laughs> are, are, are good to clear your urinary tract? Yeah, yeah, they're the, the very best. And they have to be eaten 24 hours before, after you pick them. Oh, I didn't know that. And, which means you can't buy them in a store. <laughs> <laughs> you said we're having berry pie tonight. and because it's gonna you have... mentioned it when, a long time ago. And, I, and, you, and you said, well, when I come to visit you, I want to have berry pie. And I made it because I figured you wouldn't have time to help me make it. Good, good. I, I'm glad you did. <laughs> and, so and you're going to have blackberries, gooseberries, what, how many? Black raspberries, wine berries, and what else is in there? Strawberries. All berries from the garden. Now, what do you use wild blue indigo for? Is it an well, herb? It's or a, a native shrub. Um, from what I understand, uh, I, I'm not sure which part of the plant. I believe it's the root is used as a medicine to help your immune system ah. but the flowers are used as a blue dye okay so tonight we're having the asparagus that we just pulled in the garden and succotash and from the garden we're having local pork chops and succotash which is uh lima beans and, and corn, corn from the garden from the garden and sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes from the garden. Wow. And applesauce. And applesauce your from own the garden. canned applesauce from the garden. And sweet potato biscuits. And sweet potato biscuits. And wow. Th these are from perennial roots, and these are from the local butcher. All right. Can't wait. All these flowers came from the garden too, right? Yeah, absolutely. This was my wow. mother's. It's very fragrant. That's gorgeous. Or is it fragrant? Let me smell it. I am eating a bite of pork from an, a heritage pig. Is that yeah, right? it's mule-footed hogs from perennial roots. Mule-footed hog from perennial roots. You can find perennial roots on Facebook. Um, um, in Virginia. In Virginia. Wow, and I just said it was a cross between pork and deer. <laughs> yeah. Really, really interesting. Uh, infusion of raspberry wine. And it's from it's from Washington State. Over eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh, so good. It is good. It goes. Oh, what a meal. Okay, this is homemade ice cream and homemade berry pie. Berry pie. That's a lot of berries. Wow. Well, there's Blackberries, strawberries, gooseberries. I don't, even, I don't even think I grow this many berries in a whole year. Yeah. <laughs> it's in this one slice. Yeah. Ah, all right, here we go. Look at that. Wow. Mm. Hey, you cracked me up. <laughs> that is so good. Absolutely. Homegrown, wow, mm, wow.